Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is possibly and aptly the right person to shed some light on this topic. Hans Paul Berkner, chairman of the Boston Consulting Group, was the company's fifth CEO from the year 2004 to 2012. The consulting magazine named Hans Paul in the top 25 consultants in the year 2003. Under his leadership, BCG established public sector and sustainability practices, social impact and education initiatives, along with insurance, marketing and sales practices. With a key focus on globalization and transformation, he has counted amongst his clients many of the world's leading companies over the course of three plus decades. Hans Paul has helped redefine strategies and organizations, spearhead major global initiatives, and supported companies in the fundamental transformation of their businesses. Mr. Berkner, we are indeed eager to know more about the data debate. May I please request you to kindly join us on stage. The stage is yours, Mr. Berkner. Ladies and gentlemen, as we open the forum and the stage for Hans Paul, may I please request you to make all your social media posts with the hashtag IAA World Congress. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure and honor to be with you here in uh, lovely Kochi. I would like to engage with you on personalization and on privacy. I still remember in the early 90s when we talked about, I think we all did, in the marketing and advertising world about segment of one. But uh, at that time it was more a concept than actual reality. Today personalization is possible it's doable, and I think it's an absolute must for many companies, maybe for most companies. I think what we clearly see is that the new consumers, especially the millenniums, less so, I would say, my age group, are really expecting personal uh, information, personal approaches. We also have today the technology to make it work, and for many companies, it's not just an opportunity to achieve competitive advantage, but also it's a must in order to stay relevant. But I do say that there is still a long way to go. And, um, you know, I was traveling to uh, Latvia last year and made a, a booking of a hotel with booking.com, you know, a booking of hotel. And guess what, you know, month by month, I still get great offers for hotels in Riga. You know, that's what I really call personalization. Uh, obviously, I've never been back to Riga, um, and I have no plans going back to Riga anytime soon. Not because it's not a lovely place, but because the, my travels don't let me there. This is not personalization, it's just, you know, stupid uh, marketing. Um, and I think, you know, we need all to do much better. You know, when we talk about personalization, we should also see that there are enormous investments being made um, across many, many different clusters to build a personalized data. And we have just looked at the more than 2,000 investments that have been made over the last four years in you know, lots of clusters, of course, in, uh, in the social media, in arts and leisure, in education, health, in banking, financial services in general, and more than 30 billion of money, disclosed money, has been invested in these many ventures. And everybody tries to focus and be better on personalization. There are lots of opportunities, lots of technologies, lots of things going on, and segment of one marketing really becomes reality for those who really master the art and who really push the frontiers continuously. But there is another side to the personalization issue. There is the issue of privacy. And let me hasten to add privacy and security. I still remember, I think it was five, six years ago, I was sitting at a lunch in China and one of the icons of the digital world said, privacy is dead, but security is a big issue. And he said that privacy is dead because people are willing to share everything and are not 
really worried about what happens to their data. And he was concerned about security because his platform was attacked hundreds of thousands of times every day. But I would like you to really not disconnect those two things of privacy and security because they are really truly interlinked. And when you think about personalization, you also need to understand there is an enormous need for really observing privacy and to really accept the responsibility also for the security of your customers. Now, of course, there are worries. There are worries about privacy and security. We have had the discussion around Facebook and um, Cambridge Analytics. And we literally have thousands of major hacks every year with literally billions of data sets being stolen. Now, many of those data sets will have no value. But quite some of them have. And when, of course, when we hear about big security issues, we hear about the big companies that have been attacked and maybe even paralyzed for days and, and weeks. But every day, thousands and thousands of individuals, small firms, are also being hacked and paralyzed and having to pay in bitcoins or other currencies to get their systems released and freed up. And so, while of course we do really think of our personalization all the time, we also need to look at the other side, and that is privacy and security. Uh, not just because, you know, a lot of the data that we are using um, and the personalization does not create value for our customers. We need to think about it also because, of course, government regulations will increase and intensify going forward. We need to be very, very careful as we exchange data between firms, you know, the personal data that you have about your customers should be staying with you or should you be allowed to uh, exchange that with third parties and they then exchange them again with somebody else in the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh party. And of course, we should also talk about, you know, should the customer be able to access her or his own data? Who does own it? Can you also delete those data? Now, clearly, when people hear about security issues, they become more concerned. And this is uh, the result of a survey, you know, 25,000 people across the world, you know, just in 2018, over 2017, the number of people who are more concerned about privacy and security has increased significantly. And remarkably, I did not know that, I must say, that India uh, and some other emerging markets are there at the forefront of being most concerned, whereas uh, the consumers in, uh, in Europe um, seem to have less an increase an issue, maybe because they feel more secure, um, more be, maybe because they're more ignorant, not quite sure. So people are more concerned. And I think also regulations becoming much, much more stringent. There has been lots of noise around the European uh, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. Uh, it has caused, of course, a lot of issues for, for companies, but it's clearly an important first step um, in order to uh, get enforcement of privacy, um, of giving, getting better governance, of trying to get consent in a less ambiguous way, and also the right to be forgotten. And I think it's very important to keep this in mind and also to recognize this is only the beginning. You may complain about this as a company, you may feel that's putting a lot of bureaucracy uh, and a lot of um, uh, work, you know, in your interaction with customers. But I think you should not underestimate that this will be with us and it will get more challenging 
more stringent over time, and not just in Europe, but across the world, with some exceptions maybe in some countries. But I think it's also important to understand that with all the personalization opportunities, there is the responsibility that you have for the privacy and the security of your customers. Finding the right balance, I think, is really key. And we here we ask uh, quite a number of companies and also their customers about do they expect prior consent of personal data to the users of personal data. And interestingly, for internal improvement processes, you know, people, both companies and their customers are reasonably relaxed. Very few really expect the data uh, usage to be, uh, get prior consent. Similarly, you know, personalized offers, I think customers, consumers expect this. The companies, I think, are probably more aware and they're trying to, to get prior consent. Now, where the picture changes significantly is the moment companies are sharing the data of their customers and consumers with third parties. Consumers expect more prior approval consent. Um, and, but also, interestingly enough, the companies, you know, half the companies that we interviewed felt that, you know, they need to get prior consent. And I think it's very important to keep this in mind. And I think it's good to see that companies are even more concerned than their consumers because they understand more and better than their customers that privacy and security go hand in hand. Now, when it comes to, you know, how to approach personalization, privacy and security in the best possible way, of course, there needs to be a very clear and strong concept in your mind, in your company. It's about control and, and transparency. You know, make sure that you really know what kind of data you're collecting, storing, how you're using it, um, that you have yourself full transparency, which is probably not true for most companies, and that you also are very open with your customers, with your consumers about what you collect, what you use, how you're using it. I think it's also important, and that refers to the relevance required, it's very important to understand and to make sure that your consumers and your customers understand that, you know, the personalized offers really carries value for them. So they will not be inundated with, you know, irrelevant stuff, irrelevant information, that they really get the right offers at the right time. And for that, it's very important to really bring the data scientists together with the marketeers. It's not just sufficient to do whatever you can do, but it's also to really think through, you know, is it really creating relevant information? Does it really create value for your consumers? Because then they will appreciate it. And I think it's also important to continuously refine your system to ensure that there is less friction, there is better and you know, clearer targeting, uh, not the fact that, you know, that I will get for the next several months you know, more great offers of hotels in Riga. You know, that's uh, probably um, a misuse of the system and obviously not a very elegant way of, of targeting customers. But I think the key is really to, to think very carefully about who you target, how you target, and then finally also, what are you sharing and what are you not sharing? And it's not just to think about, you know, the third party that you are giving the data. It's also to think what they will do to share it and with whom they are sharing it. And maybe your system has good transparency, good security. The third party may also still have reasonable security and, uh, and transparency but the fourth and fifth and sixth party doesn't have it. And eventually, you know, your consumers, your customers will be hit. And I think it's very important to keep this in mind. Your responsibility goes way beyond yourself. It really affects the whole chain of data transform, transformation and, and data uh, exchange. I need to press a bit harder. 
I would like to, to finish with a good and a not so good example. A very good example um, is Starbucks in the US. And both uh, Kevin Johnson, the CEO, and Howard Schultz really have put a lot of effort into personalizing the relationship with their customers. And they have very, very good results. Not only do they have uh, you know, three times the normal campaign results when they try to promote their products, they have also very, very strong customer response rate and very positive response rate and ultimately 8% increase in revenues, which is really way above what they usually have had over, you know, with other similar uh, campaigns. So personalization really pays off. But again, it is about being very thoughtful about how you use it. And a not so good example is a retailer, you know, who really put together this idea is if certain women buy and a certain number of products, they are most likely to be pregnant. They made this public and they got a lot of negative um, response, as you can imagine. Uh, bad publicity and uh, really uh, not only uh, affecting the brand negatively, but really losing a lot of consumers, a lot of um, business. And so I think it's very important to push for personalization, but do it in a thoughtful way that really creates value for customers and not destroys the trust and certainly doesn't toy, destroy the brand. So ultimately, it's really about ensuring that you're balancing privacy and security. Don't forget security because it's closely linked to privacy and personalization. And that you really live up to the responsibility that you have. I'm sure you will be thoughtful in your approach. You will continuously refine your approach as you go forward. And of course, you know, with um, the many friends from the advertising agencies here in the room also, for them, just to think it's not just doing what is possible and technologically possible, but what is responsible and ultimately brand enhancing rather than endangering the brand because you are in danger, the customer, and you endanger uh, the consumer and uh, her or his security. Thank you very much. Uh, so there is a question. You mentioned the example of Starbucks. Do you have any other examples of tech or online ventures as a case study that you'd like to offer? Who uh, uses data as safely as Starbucks does? Well, obviously, I mean, I would say the big tech companies, uh, the Googles, the Amazons, uh, Alibaba, Tencent, are uh, uh, very, very intensely using personalized data and personalized offering, um, sometimes in a, in a very extreme way. I mean, we are thinking about not just uh, credit uh, scoring, but also uh, political and, uh, and social scoring systems. Um, so I think we have a lot of examples uh, out there. Uh, but, you know, I, as I mentioned, you know, they're also very poor examples. And, uh, and I think, you know, it's very important as you engage, um, you know, within your firm about how to approach things to be uh, always taking a step back and says, you know, what are we doing right here? You know, how can this end up the wrong way? So also having some uh, critiques within the room who are willing to, uh, to challenge you. And I think letting yourself be challenged before really pushing too fast, too hard, and then overstepping and ultimately really doing brand damage um, and, and really risking um, also the security of your consumer. So I think the key is, is to be very thoughtful in the approach and also um, you know, to, to take a step-by-step -step approach rather than, and that was, was Starbucks, for example, also taking trying out things first before really going all in um, and, uh, and running into difficulties. So the key is to, to also re be willing to listen to the uh, critiques in your uh, firm to understand the second and third order effects um, before you go all out. Sorry, is, this is just in continuation to the question. You said that we do have a lot of tech giants who uh, could be used as example because they do collate data, but you said they were poor examples. What could be the reason that they are considered to be poor examples? Well, you know, I think poor examples is when um, you just uh, milk the information, you sell the information, the private information to others 
who then may misuse it even to blackmail some of the customers. Is this authentic data? This is authentic data, absolutely. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. No, I think, you know, uh, uh, there are, I think you, you should not underestimate that every second today, people are being attacked, people are being blackmailed for information that they, I mean, some of it they have uh, provided themselves, you know, stupidly, um, but uh, some of this has gone through multiple hands until it ended up in the wrong hands. Um, and so I think do not underestimate this challenge. Literally every second today, you know, somebody is being attacked in a major way. And I think you should be aware of this. You should think about the consequence of what you're doing. Um, and, you know, as I also mentioned, of course, there are literally, you know, thousands of ventures, people who try to personalize uh, healthcare, who personalize education, um, of course, you know, the e-commerce uh, side, but also, um, I think, uh, offering people interesting entertainment opportunities and so forth. There are very good examples, um, many small ones, people are trying out things. It is a constant uh, trial and effort trial and error, and I think it's very important to experiment, to try out things, but to be very thoughtful as you approach things. Thank you so much for being so patient and answering our questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ramesh, sir. Thank you for your time.